Welcome back, my law and crime family, Law and Crime Network. We are, and I'm Linda Kenny Bodden, and I am, a, again, we have a very special guest with us right now. That's Judah Engelmeyer. He, I am sure, would say that he has been through the wars with Harvey Weinstein. You saw him in a lot of the pictures that we saw on TV. Uh, he was there. He handled a lot of the media, and I think he was called by Judge Burke as a fresh juggernaut. Uh, I think that was uh, supposedly a compliment, uh, Judah. Backhanded, I think. Yeah. Now, you and I have met each other yes. in the past, yes. and we worked yes. together for a little bit. But let me, uh, let me just tell sure. the viewers that you are no, no longer under a gag order. That ended at the time of the jury verdict, uh, and therefore you're not violating any court. That is, that is correct. The, judge, the judge's gag order was until the verdict. Tell me, Judah, your reaction when that verdict came in for guilty on Mimi Halle and Jessica Mann. Well, we were a little, little surprised. Um, to, to be fair, uh, if, you listen to, if, you, if you listen to the testimony and sat in the court the way we did, Honestly, I felt Annabella's testimony, if, you, if it was from an outsider, was probably the most compelling. We didn't expect the count on Jessica to have any to have, to have any merit with the with, with the uh, with, with the jury. I'm a little surprised about that. Um, what, were we were we surprised completely? No, we weren't. We weren't surprised at at, a, at at the verdict. We were very relieved that predatorial that the predatorial count didn't didn't, uh, didn't make it. Why do you think the jury found him guilty of the count with Jessica Mann, which is, I think, what surprised uh, many of us who right. were commenting on the case? Well, I'll tell you what I think the lawyers won't be able to say is that I think that to the extent the jurors have heard about this case for two years already, and I don't, there's not a single juror who didn't know about the Harvey Weinstein case, who hasn't read about it, who wasn't prepared for what they were going to hear in the courtroom, and they felt they had to do with public justice. And by giving the minimal counts on these other people was their public, was, was their public justice. Now, uh, you were a big proponent, I know, when I used to speak to you about trying this case in the courtroom. Right. Yet, uh, your lead counsel, uh, Jose Baez, was just on recently. He was critical of her going out and talking to Newsweek, writing an op right. outside the courtroom. Right. If you had to do it over again, would you have tried to suggest that that not be done? You see, I don't know if that affected us on the, on the, on to, to the jury. I think the problem that we had and the reason Donna went, went out there was because we were constantly being being pressured by, by, uh, by the, the negative media, by the opposition media, by 80 people out there who made complaints against Harvey, and then all the people who were on the bandwagon saying, Harvey has to pay, Harvey has to pay. And there wasn't anybody saying anything on Harvey's narrative side. And I think Donna felt that it's just not fair for us, to, for us not to be able to speak. It's one thing for Joan to say, I'm not going out there speaking. They shouldn't be either. Joan didn't have to. She had a, she, she had a, she had a thousand people speaking on her behalf, even if they didn't have a direct conversation with her, saying what they needed, what, what she needed them to hear, what she needed their, their, her jurors and her public to hear. We had nobody defending Harvey. Well, as a matter of fact, one of the issues that came up, I think I read, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm correct about this, uh, that Donna Rotuna asked that Gloria Allred, who represented a number of the victims, be gagged. And, and I, before you comment, we have a clip of, uh, I will call it a squabble mm -hmm. or dust up that occurred this morning outside the courthouse. Can right. we play that now? You guys are going to have to make a choice because we have to go do some work. So you can either hear from the defense okay. team or you can hear from You're Gloria. You're not going you to silence to me again. No, silencing you. Oh, yes, no, you no, are. All right. Oh, so yes, then you guys you aren't going to hear from us. Well, really? Donna. Uh, all right, I have a short statement. Today, the jury in the criminal case of the people of the state of New York versus Harvey Weinstein returned a verdict against the defendant. Now you gotta get down, all right? Harvey Weinstein. It's not about you, babe. Get down. Do you want to go over there? Is that what you want to do? Now, you were there, and Arthur Idala, who we all know here in the criminal bar, mm -hmm. uh, who is, uh, you know, he's not, he's not afraid to speak up. Right, I mean, right. he's an excellent, excellent trial lawyer. Uh, you were smiling. Right. Tell us your side of the story as to what happened. So, what happened is, the story is, as everybody, as you know, people want to hear from Harvey Weinstein's lawyers. The case was between Harvey, it was the state versus Harvey Weinstein. So, Harvey Weinstein's lawyers are coming up. Gloria, who, ha who represents some, some of, the, uh, of, of the witnesses in this case, was speaking. But you know very well the way the press really wanted. They wanted to hear from our side. So if I were Gloria, maybe step aside, then she can continue taking the press later on. And she didn't want to, and we're like, we're not going to stand there. And as soon as we walked away, all the press followed us and left her alone speaking. While we weren't at the podium anymore, we had the press conference off to the side. 
And, what, what, and but this, this goes to the, to the heart of the problem all along. She, she, uh, um, Gloria's disingenuous by saying that she wasn't a mouthpiece of the prosecution. She was sitting in the first two rows, and if you know how the courtroom was set up over the past several weeks, it wasn't a free-for-all courtroom. The press had their seats, the very back row were for guests who wanted to sit there and listen on the trial, and the two rows on either side were either the defense side or the prosecution side, and you had to be guests of on their guest list. And Gloria was on their guest list. That doesn't mean that she's, you know, that, that she, she's able to speak for them, but the fact that she was sitting there whispering to them the whole time, sending those back and forth with the ADAs and the, and the, and the, and the assistants who were sitting there, and when she gets up and saying, oh, I, when she got up on TV the other day and said, I was just, I'm a lawyer, it says lawyers and police officers only, so I know where I'm allowed to sit, that's not how it worked in this courtroom this, this, this time around. It was very specific. Those were for, those were for the, the prosecution side, and she was front and center the entire time. So to say that, and, and on top of her witnesses, some of her, her clients are witnesses, to say that she is not a mouthpiece or a, or, or a surrogate for the prosecution, it's a little disingenuous. Let me ask you this. Did sure. the defense ask that those notes be collected, marked, uh, as an exhibit, or ask them to be given to the court in some way. I, I, Damon had made made various points like that, but to the point of saying, "Can the no speak collected?" I don't know. There was given behind the gallery. I don't know if if that if that has any measure, if that has any merit. Have you been able to speak to Harvey Weinstein since he was remanded? I to spoke jail? to him before he got shuttled off to the tombs. Yeah. And can you uh, tell us anything that he said that you feel comfortable? Uh, he's sad. He's, uh, he's extremely disappointed. Um, as he said, he thinks, you know, obviously the prosecution did what they, what they set out to do. Um, and he's a little surprised at the verdict himself. And we're, he knows we have an appeal and we're going to be fighting this. Now, now um, uh, just uh, so the public knows, now he has two small kids, no matter what you think of Harvey right. Weinstein, they become victims in this, whether right. you say they're victims of the process, of him, whatever. What happens to those children? Well, they have a mother, and there's plenty of care keepers, caregivers, uh, and they're, they, they're being prepared. They're, 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 I think um, you know, Harvey's ex-wife is talking to them, letting them know what to expect, when they're going to be able to see their father and how, and trying to help. The, they're seven and nine years old, hard to understand at this point, but they're doing the best they can. So one of the things is that obviously you said there's going to be an appeal, but we know that takes time. There's going to be a case in Los Angeles, right. which will be after the sentencing. But uh, Donna Rotunda tried to get him a house arrest, pending at least pending right. the sentence today, right. maybe pending the appeal. Obviously, right. she'll try again, I assume. Uh, but um, she then went out and said that he's very strong, as right. opposed to talking about in the courtroom about how sick he was. Was there any kind of dichotomy no. there that seemed, or, or so, can you explain that what appeared to the public as being a dichotomy? Physically, physically, he has he has ailments and they're hurting him. You could see him every day of the of the trial getting worse and worse. Headstrong, he's very headstrong. He knows what he has to do to live. He knows what he has to do to survive. He knows what he has to do to make it. So he's so in his head, he's very strong, strong-willed, but physically, he he does have issues. And let me ask you this thing, because sure. I have obviously been in cases where I've had a client commit suicide in jail. Any indication that he's a suicide risk? I, I don't think so at all. He, has, he loves his children too much to, to make that happen, and he also wants to make amends with his three older girls that, that, he's, that he's lost contact with. Uh, so I think he, has, and he, he wants to make that impact. Anything he wants to prove, ultimately prove his innocence through an appeal and through the work he's going to do for the rest of his life. No. Um, I, I see that you're getting a little bit weepy-eyed, so I'm going to just change the subject <laughs> off that for a second, uh, because we do have a conviction here. Right. Now, Donna Rotuna was labeled, she labeled herself as a bulldog, that mm -hmm. only she really, as a woman, could cross-examine these witnesses. Harvey Weinstein is accused of using his bulldog status to overcome the will of right. these women. Do, do you think that the jury may not have liked that style, given the fact that that's exactly the same thing that he's being accused by the prosecution of overcoming, the will of the uh, the women so that's, victimizing them? It's a good question. And the problem I have with that is that I don't know how else, whether it was Donna, Damon, Arthur, whether it was Jose Baez beforehand, somebody had to question these people. If you're going to make an accusation against somebody and charge them with, 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 with a crime, you have to be questioned in court. So someone's going to question them. And to suggest that certain people for certain crimes, you, don't, you can't question them, you can't say anything, I, I don't know how else to try a case. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to ask you the fine line, and I know it's a fine line, right. of, of the attack dog or the self-labeled bulldog status as opposed to questioning and cross-examining harshly but not with maybe that attack label that, who knows, the jury may have read about, even though they're not supposed right, to. Right. Well, OK, I don't know whether the jury didn't read or not. Right. I, I think it's, 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 we give them it's, the dignity. We it's gratuitous dignity. to think that they haven't. And, right. and I, I don't buy that for one second. I think Judge Burke knew that as well. Um, but but I, I don't, 
I, I think that, that Donna was as careful as she could be. And if you actually look, I think Damon's style is a bit more of an attack than, than Donna. But because Donna's a woman, she got, I think she got labeled a bit more of a bulldog. If you watch in the courtroom, Damon is a bit more staccato, a bit more focused, and a bit more frightening. Um, if I were being cross-examined by him, I would be more, I would, I'd be scared. Donna was a little more soft, a little softer in how she did it. They just don't like the questions she was asking, because she was asking real questions. You have to ask for a defense. And I don't know any other way around it, like I said. But I think it is, because she's a woman, it's easy to, e easy to brand her and say she's the attack dog and say she shouldn't be doing this. Well, she labeled that herself, but that's, well, no, that, she, that's the, she that, that's the that, problem. But a like, news, another newspaper in Chicago called for that. Called that. But she right. kind of, she kind of um, embodies, she, you know, she talked right. about it. She, 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 she's unabashed about, about believing in that, that, that this movement goes too far if it takes away due process. If you're going to try everything in, in the public and make somebody guilty before they even have a trial, she's against that. And, 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 and that, I think she said that right from day one, and she has no problem fighting that. Yeah, and I think every defense attorney who represents clients wants to make sure that you get a right. fair shake in the courtroom, because or else why be a defense attorney right. if you can't right. represent the Constitution, which is what you're doing. So going back now to uh, Jessica Mann's case, OK? Because mm -hmm. again, that's the one that surprised most of us. Right? right. Now, she did leave the courthouse or the courtroom when she was in the middle of cross-examination crying. Right. What was the question that brought that on? By who was it? And, and what was your view of what was happening then and what the jury really felt for her at that point? So I think the jury felt pain for her. I think the jury saw her being cross-examined and questioned really harshly on what she believes to be her experience. And if she says she kept on yelling out the word, I was raped, he's my rapist. And then she broke down crying over, I forgot, I really don't remember what the what specific question was. But clearly the jury felt for her. The, they, they saw her crying, they felt her pain, and they said, this must, you know, this must be true. And do you think there's anything else that you now as a press person would recommend to the defense team to do differently? Or do you think that this was a preordained verdict given the Me Too movement and, and the bad, uh, well, you know, the other women out there, which, you know, I think a lot of people paid attention so to? So I'm not going to question how a trial, jury, a trial lawyer does their job because, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not one myself. But I will say that if Harvey had gotten out with his narrative before he was ever charged with a crime back in October 2017 and started systemically going, not going after the women, but explaining one by one who these people are and what they're saying, because it wasn't even the women charged in this crime. It was the 80 women out there, some of the Hollywood elites out there who've made comments about Harvey. If he would have come out and just went out and told his position, explained, which we have a perfectly valid explanation for just about every one of these people who've complained, it might have changed the narrative leading up to it. Judah, I want to thank you for coming on because you know I didn't give you the questions in advance and try to get you some really hard questions in there, and I really thank appreciate you. your honesty. I appreciate so it. So whatever side you're on, thank you for coming it's, on to the Law and Crime Network. It's nice seeing you again. Nice working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. That's Judah Engelman. He was Engelmeyer. He was the, uh, as the judge would say, the tentacle press. I mean, the one press person for Harvey Weinstein, and he just gave us that uh, unabashed, honest, straightforward interview. Stay tuned. We'll have more when we come back.